This is the final set of notes on, on um, ecology. This one is about succession, biodiversity, and conservation. Succession you've learned about before, uh, so just for definition, uh, it occurs following some kind of disturbance that strips away vegetation, possibly removing the soil. Uh, there are two main kinds of succession. There's primary succession, where you end up, we start off with bare rock uh, and no soil at all. And secondary succession is when the um, community has been wiped away, but soil is still present there. And then finally, a climax community is the final stage of succession, where the where the ecosystem uh, remains stable and the populations are in balance with each other and the environment and everything is just going along just perfectly right. Um, primary succession occurs um, usually in an area where you've had something like a volcanic eruption or the creation of new land, like in the formation of an island from volcanic activity in the ocean, or perhaps a retreating glacier where the glacier has uh, scraped everything away from the from the land and there's no soil and you're going to end up you're going to start off with no with no soil just bare rock usually the first organisms that will colonize areas like this will be lichens remember lichen is a symbiotic relationship between a fungus and an algae where the fungus can provide a point of attachment and can collect water for the algae and the algae can provide food for both of them the uh, fungal part of the lichen releases chemicals that can start to break down the rock and produce soil. And as you get more soil developed, then you end up with more and more plants that can start growing. Um, secondary succession, their soil is already present, and so it's going to go faster. It's going to take a lot longer, usually, for primary succession to occur, all the way to the climax community. So here we have an area where succession is already occurring. There's been some, there's already some soil, whether from soil formation by the lichens and uh, beginning plants, or whether it's the recolonization of an area where soil already exists. The first plants to start growing and the first, and the first things to, to colonize the area are going to be the plants because there's nothing for the animals to eat. Uh, so the first, the an annual plants like little weeds and things like that are going to be the first things to grow. Eventually, over time, you'll get perennial grasses and plant other kind of perennial plants, things that reseed themselves and continue growing from year to year. Um, small bushes. Eventually, you get shrubs, bigger bushes, and um, you, as you as time goes on with these plants growing, you're going to have more and more animals that can that can colonize the area. And with the animals come seeds of more plants in their fecal material and in their fur and so forth. Then you'll end up with, with the growing of trees. Uh, some of the first ones to grow will be the softwood trees like pines. And over a long period of time, you'll develop the hardwood trees in the, in the climax community with the greatest variety of animal and plant life. And um, everything stays in balance with each other and can continue for years and years and years unless there's some kind of disruption to the area again. Now, biodiversity is what we're talking about. When we get to that climax commu community, you've got a variety of living things that are there in the ecosystem. And um, that's the preferred um, condition. But because of, um, because there's such interaction between the members of the community, the different populations within the community, if something happens to remove or reduce one of the members of the of the community, one of the species populations of the community, it can have a negative impact on the community as a whole. And that can definitely affect the ecosystem over time. Um, one of the main things that can cause biodiversity to be lost in these days is the human alteration of habitats. And this goes back um, several thousand years to the development of agriculture. Um, when, ag when humans began planting and growing plants um, and, growing, and growing crops, that definitely had an effect. They had to clear land, they had to keep the weeds out and so forth to make the crops grow better to feed themselves and the animals. Uh, urban development over time has definitely caused the loss of habitats or the changing of habitats. Um, Forestry, which is cutting down of trees for whether being used to make paper or whether being used for lumber to build more houses. Mining, of course, other environmental pollution. All of those can have a negative impact, a negative impact on the biodiversity of a particular area. 
when you have a negative impact on one species in the one population um, of species in the in the community, it can definitely impact the whole community. And whether it's, whether a species is lost from overhunting or from the impact of a, an environmental pollutant of some kind or a loss of, of habitat due to encroachment of other animals, including humans, those can definitely impact the ecosystem as a whole. A second uh, in, um, impact on loss of biodiversity is invasive species. This is second only behind habitat destruction. Invasive species uh, uh, compete with the native species, but they don't have any natural enemies in that area. And so um, they are gonna ha it's going to be difficult for the native inhabitants of that area to um, resist the encroachment of the invasive species. Um, a num there are a number of examples of this. One that we personally have had contact with here in our area is fire the encroachment of fire ants. Fire ants originated in South America and have been steadily uh, encroaching upon areas in the south beginning in the Mobile, Alabama area back in the 1930s and 40s and they've moved all the way into uh, northern and western Texas by now. There are a number of our native species like some of the native harvester ants and the um, horned toads, horned lizards that, that fed on those that have been removed from our area. They used to be pretty common in this part of the state and now we rarely see them um, because the, of the encroachment of the uh, fire ants that have destroyed, that have taken over their, their habitat. A third major threat is over-exploitation. Uh, over whether you over-harvest a certain kind of trees, whether you kill off a particular kind of animal uh, because it's a desirable uh, trophy or some other reason, uh, that can definitely have an impact on the um, ecosystem as a whole. If the top-level predator in an area is a tiger and you kill off all the tigers, then that's going to lead to the overpopulation of some of the prey species and that can definitely have a negative impact. They'll reach their carrying capacity and go past it, and then they'll die off to a greater extent because of that. Um, it, the it can change the whole makeup of the ecosystem just by losing one particular species. Um, another activity of humans that can have a negative effect on the environment is biomagnification. This is producing, um, this is what happens when you have certain kinds of environmental pollutants, uh, toxins, that the species within the ecosystem cannot get rid of uh, or not broken down. And what happens is that, that when, this, when these toxins enter the food chain at a lower level, at the producer level, the um, accumulation of the toxins in the tissues of the members of the food chain magnifies or multiplies as it moves from the producer level to the higher order levels. Here we see a, a diagram showing a particular pollutant. This is called PCBs, polychlorinated biphenyls. that are used in lots of different kinds of cleaning products and various kinds of solvents. Um, and as they enter into the um, aquatic system by means of runoff, uh, they they will be accumulated into the tissues of the phytoplankton at a pretty pretty low level here, um, 0 0.025 parts per million. It's a pretty low level, but as the phytoplankton is consumed by the zooplankton and the and the other primary consumers, you'll see that that percentage of the PCBs in their tissues increases steadily as you move up the food chain. And finally, when you get to the quaternary uh, consumers up here at the top, the herring gulls, you're going to have a much higher percentage of, of the PCBs in their tissues. This can have negative impacts on uh, the reproductive success of the top order um, consumers and other others in the food chain, it can cause some time, some of these things can cause mutations in some of the species that are exposed to them, um, and it can definitely have a negative effect. This is what led to the, um, the almost, the, the uh, endangerment of things like bald eagles. Uh, there were chemicals in the, in the environment, we'll talk about these in class, that were accumulated through um, runoff into the tissues and work their way up to the food chain to prevent um, the highest order consu consumers from reproducing successfully. 
Now, one of the things that we need to be concerned about when we talk about ecology is conservation. And this is how to understand and counter the loss of biodiversity. And there are a number of different things that can be done to prevent. We can work toward protecting populations. We can work to increase endangered populations. We can also work to try to avoid encroaching into areas and, and altering habitats and so forth. And that's um, what we need to think about in terms of what the future of our Earth is. Um, restoration ecology uses these principles to restore areas. This can be uh, restoring wetlands that are necessary for various kinds of waterfowl. Uh, we can detoxify pollution. When we have uh, oil spills, for instance, as happened in the Gulf a couple of years ago, we can have um, do, uh, activities that can hopefully reduce the toxicity of those pollutants and return things back to their natural um, levels. And then we also need to work about work on sustainable development, which which helps to improve the human condition by, by while also conserving biodiversity. And so, using our knowledge of ecology and how various activities can impact the ecosystem and the biosphere as a whole, then that will allow us to um, hopefully prevent some of those changes while still allowing the increase or improvement of the human conditions. It is important for us to appreciate and understand the, um, the impact that we can have on the environment so that we can understand why it's important to save it and work toward maintaining this biosphere and the, the ecosystem for the long term. This concludes the notes on ecology.